come to the last unit of our uh, multivariate calculus <laughs> when i say the last unit it means that's the last thing we'll be taking under multivariate calculus so far we've considered function of several variables that is our first unit where we talked about all these guys here the second unit was on multiple integrals where we talked about double and triple we looked at evaluating rectangular domains and then general domains under double the same thing applies to rectangular sorry triple where we had rectangular and then some general regions and a double we had what we call the circle which resulted in some polar coordinates over here we had some spherical and then cylindrical and to be able to move from one coordinate to the other we, we it was by the help of a guy called jacobian transformation we were able to do all this now taking the last unit which is on vector fields vector fields and what are vector fields so i have with me my slides which will help me explain things if you look at the graph or the figure i have here it is showing you some movement of something that is in a, in a particular direction as well this is what comes to mind when we talk about vector fields you are looking at a flow in a form of direction you can see that the wind is blowing a particular form if there's a direction it means there's a length and what we call the magnitude at which this flow is occurring and so i've already talked about the concept of vector field as a flow we can have electrical flow the flow of blood through the body the turbines of airplanes the flow of fluid through certain pipes and even porous media these are all kind of flows and many others now you realize that throughout um, the second unit we're talking about some shapes or geometries we had a 2d which was in double and then we had a 3d which was in triple now per the picture you can tell what 2d shapes are and what 3d shapes are and so what is objective under this and now when we talk about shapes we have certain key terms to look at for we have a curve and then we have a surface when do we have a curve and when do we have a surface that is something we'll get to know soon and so if you're able to describe a vectors on this curves and surfaces it means functions defining them we must be able to tell the derivatives and integrations of these curves or functions describing the curves and surfaces and then the last thing we'll look at some fundamental theorems governing the functions of curves and surfaces so for my slides there are three things to look out for in this last unit for today i'm going to take the first one that is introduction to vectors and vector fields i'll try my best to help you understand so what are the tax here is to want to be able to know how these vector fields are represented so i'll say representation and then we'll look at the graph just these two simple things to do so let's quickly go straight what is a vector so i use big vf for vector field graphing of vector fields before we know what a vector is we must first know what a vector is so a vector it says is a quantity this quantity has two things it has a magnitude and it has a direction magnitude is the same as the size or the length of the quantity direction is the angle at which we are moving are we moving at 90 degrees 30 degrees 60 degrees what is the direction of the vector and at this we have various form we have a scalar quantities and vector quantities scalar quantities have just magnitude they do not have directions and so if you look at the table i have you should be able to tell why these are scalars and why these are vector quantities we will talk about that more in in person now let's look at representations of a vector we are still on a vector don't forget that it says it has magnitude and direction 
how do I write it? So the representation. The rep. If I write a vector as A, I must show an arrow. So a vector is like an arrow. It has a head and tail. Where it starts from and where it's heading towards. If I have this on top of the A, it means it's a vector. So B with the arrow on it shows it's a vector. Okay. So I've already talked about magnitude being the length. So the length from this point to that point is the magnitude. And then the angle gives you the direction. With now knowing what a vector is, we can tell what a vector field is. Now, what is a vector field? There are two words here, a vector and a field. So what do you think a vector field would be? A vector field would be a field. This is a field containing vectors. Hmm. So a vector field is just a field, a plane, or a space which contains vectors. So if this is my field, if this is a field, it means I have one vector moving this way, another vector, another vector, I have a vector this, I have a vector that. This are uh, a collection of vectors in the field, so it's a vector field. Now we, are, we said that a vector has magnitude and direction. This implies that this vector field will also have some magnitude and it will also have what a direction. So if you look at the figure here, it shows a, a flow, a fluid flowing. It can be a river in it and you can see that the vectors are moving in a certain dynamics or direction. And so that is the vector field, a collection of vectors. Now in the physical quantities, we can talk about gravity. If I should um, hold a ball and leave it, the direction in which I, I, I point my hand to, that is how the ball would fall. It's moving with a speed and then a direction is given. The same with magnitude, sorry, magnetis, uh, magnetism. How I, I position the magnet will tell how the pins will be attracted to the magnet. All right. So let's look at the representation for vector field. We did that for vectors. How do I represent a vector field? So the ref for a vector field. To show that I have a vector field, we use what we call the component of function. It is an angle bracket. So I have F and then J. Or I can use the unit, the unit vectors. So F, I, J, and J. This is 2D. If I'm 3D, I can use F, J, H. And in the, first, in the field, I'll be using F, I, plus J, J, plus H, K. So this is a 2D. This is a 3D. This is equivalent to that. This is also equivalent to that. So there are two representations here. You can use a component of functions or you can use a unit vectors where it has i, j, k. So I'm stressing that again. You can either use the angle bracket or the unit i, j, k. All right. Now with that said, we've done the representations of vector fields. Let's see how we graph vector fields. If you want to know how your vector field looks like, you would always want to construct a vector. Don't forget, a vector field is a collection of vectors. So you first have to construct some vectors. And then you know how they are moving. It will give you the full face. So I'm having an example here. It says, assume you have a vector field. This is a two dimension. It is given as negative i plus xj you now can rewrite this as some angle that, that know the difference the angle takes a comma the i and j takes the sum okay now we'll, we'll construct some points from it i have some xj so this is a a vector if i use this that is a vector field assuming i have the point one zero 
how would the vector field look like? It will be, how would the vector, sorry. It says negative y and then x. y is 0. I can't have a negative 0. So it's just 0 and then 1. If I take the point zero one now, it means I'm just moving from where I ended. It means y is negative 1 and then 0. I can take the next point as negative 1, 0. It means my vector field becomes 0 and then negative 1. I can choose a negative 1 now. I'm going to get 1 and then 0. Y 1. That it says it's negative y. There's already negative 1. It means I, it becomes a positive. Now, I can't go to 1, 0 again. Why? Because 1, 0 is the initial starting point. So it means I'm done. I can take another set of points. X, Y. And then construct X vectors from it. Let's take 2, 0. 2, 0 simply gives me this. If I take the next point as that, I'm going to get negative 2, 0. This is x, this is y. If I take negative 2, 0, I'm going to get 0, negative 2. If I take 0, negative 2, I'm going to get a vector of 2, 0. And I end here. Because the next point would have been 2, 0, which is already in the initial state. Let's see how we plot this. So I, I, my normal line here, my plane, this is 0, 1, 2. 1 and then 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, and negative 2. I'm just using this, this point. I can go beyond that. Okay, so let's see. 1, 0 is where is this point? This is 1, 0. x is 1, y is 0. 1, 0 move to 0, 1. And this is 0, 1. So it means it's going to move up here. A vector has an arrow. So I'm done with this first one. The second one stays on this point, on 1, 0. And it moves towards negative 1, 0, which is here. So it means I'm going to move this way. Because that's negative 1, 0. Negative 1, 0 now moves to 0, negative 1. 0, negative 1 is this point. It means this guy will have to come down. And then you realize that negative 0, negative 1 now moves back to 1, 0. It means this moves this way. If I should follow the point, you realize 2 will also move in that same dimension. You can verify that 2 also move just as, oh, I've extended my line. So this also move in the same direction. So I can take inner um, points. I can say, let me construct that of the same x, y of negative y, x. I can take 0 and then 0, 0 0.5 and then 0. That will be 0, 0 0.5. Okay. What else? I can now move to 0 and then 0 0.5. And I'm going to get negative 0 0.5, 0. I can move to 0, negative 0 0.5, 0. And I'm going to get 0 and then negative 0 0.5. The last thing, negative 0 and then that. And I realize I'm going to get 0 0.5, 0. And that is the end. I can't move because this is the same as this starting point here. So let's see. 0 0.5 is somewhere here. 0 0.5 also be here. So it means I'm going to move in an inner point. Let me use the blue to show the differences here. This will be the 0 0.5 point. So how do you see the, the flow? So 
So I see we moved up, we came this way, we came that. This is how it would be. So the direction we move outside, we move in. This is how the flow looks like. And so that's if, if I should use so many points, I'll have a very beautiful graph as that. It'll move like a circle. And this is how the direction of the flow would be. Okay. The second example, if I follow the same procedure, it should be the opposite. Why? Because now in place of negative y x i'm taking that of y and the negative x so it's like the reverse if you try this one out in place of moving you realize that in place of moving up and going this way i'm going to move down it's rather going to be this way and so that one moves in the other direction oh let me do the right thing So this one moves out out of the center that is a different you can try that one out in that case i have um, a tax here it says verify or match the vector fields so it means you pick one you match which one would be like that in the next video i'm going to take derivatives of vector fields and then it will be done very soon thank you